Hello, I'm Judith Hegenbarth from the Research Skills team in the Library. I hope this video will help you identify all the assets you've created, even if you don't have any journal articles or book chapters yet. Understand how you can curate these assets to your best advantage. Understand what ORCID is and why it's important. And finally, help you get your ORCID set up. Before we start thinking about any electronic tools, let's step back and reflect on what you have written or produced during your career already and make a list of them. You may already have journal articles or something published in the traditional sense. And if you're a PhD student, you'll eventually have a thesis to your name. However, you might already have written blog posts or created a data set or some computer code or you might have presented a paper or a poster at a conference. These might not be published in the traditional sense, but you have spent some time doing research and writing or creating these outputs, and it would be good to let others know that they exist. You could even pause the video to make a list right now. There will be a number of different people interested in seeing what you've created, from other researchers in your discipline to potential employers, to funders who could potentially fund your projects in the future. So now you've got an idea of the valuable assets you've already created. In the online world, you need a way to present these assets, even if you can't share the whole thing. It could be useful just to describe them. In order for search engines to find things online, information has to be tagged with metadata. There are cons some consistent ways that certain data can be tagged and standards have been created to enable persistent identifiers to exist. These identifiers don't sound like they're going to set the world alight, but they are crucial to you and your work being found. To help you understand what we mean by persistent identifiers, think about an ISBN for a book. It's a unique string of 10 or 13 numbers, which means that two books with the same title can't be confused. The ISSN does the same for a journal title, like the Lancet or the Times Literary Supplement. We have identifiers for electronic works, like a DOI for an electronic journal article, or a PMID for a paper on PubMed. We also have identifiers for individual authors like you, Scopus IDs and researcher IDs for authors whose papers are in the big bibliographic databases, Scopus and Web of Science. The ones we're going to concentrate on today are DOIs, which you can attach to your assets, and ORCID, or Open Researcher and Contributor ID, which you can generate for yourself. I asked you to think a bit earlier about work you've done, which isn't yet published in the traditional sense. If you want people to find your work, it's useful to be able to deposit it on some kind of platform, generate a link, and then direct people to it using that link. If you can generate a DOI, a digital object identifier, and attach it to your work, it will make it easy for people to find your work, and most importantly, to cite it if they refer to it later. The network of citations to your work that builds up will allow you to increase your influence through the literature. If you're publishing a peer-reviewed journal in the traditional sense, the publisher will generate a DOI for you. If you have a data set to deposit, and you don't necessarily have to share this in full, you can just let people know it exists, you can add it to a repository such as the Humanities Common Core or the university's own repository, eData. When you deposit your output, a DOI will be minted, and this is what you can share with others. If you have an unpublished paper or a PowerPoint presentation that you'd like to deposit, you can use community-based platforms such as Zenodo, which was created by researchers at CERN in Switzerland, or the university's own ePapers repository, which provides a persistent URL which becomes your link. Using these web-based tools, you can become your own publisher and allow people to see your work. So once you've thought about your outputs or assets, you need to attach them to a profile, like an online CV for you as a researcher. 
ORCID is the most credible system that will enable you to do this. It's a not-for-profit initiative, so it doesn't belong to a publisher and doesn't require you to pay a subscription. It's portable, so when you move between organisations, you don't have to start all over again. At its heart, it connects you with your work and with the institutions you've been involved with. It makes you more discoverable and connects with lots of other information systems so you can push and pull information to save you updating many times. It links, for example, to some of the bibli big bibliographic data sources and will pull in journal article data, which is a big time saver when you start publishing on a regular basis. We have an intranet page which goes into a bit more detail. When you register with ORCID, it will generate a unique 16 digit ID. This ID will ensure that you're not confused with a researcher with the same name. Even if you change your name, your ORCID will persist and allow you to claim all the works that you have legitimately created. This life cycle diagram gives you a feel for how many players in the publication system now use ORCID as a way of identifying authors. On the top right, you can see that many funders are now routinely asking to know an applicant's ORCID. Authors submitting manuscripts to journals are often now required to have an ORCID, and platforms that allow for deposit of data sets ask the depositor for theirs. Once the metadata about a published article is released into that ecosystem, an, orchid's, an author's ORCID can be included. To give you a feel for what an ORCID record looks like, here's one for Stephen Hawking. We can see here details about his education and his employment. This further profile shows one of our history academics, and you can see details about the funding she has received for her research projects. This profile belongs to one of our social scientists, and you can see details about the papers he has published in the works section. So let's finally look at how you can set up your ORCID. You may be aware that the University of Birmingham maintains an online system called PURE, this system holds information about all the researchers in the institution, the funding they've received, the data sets they've produced, and the outputs they've published. Pure integrates with ORCID and allows information sharing between the systems. For this reason, the university recommends starting in Pure and generating an ORCID, or linking the two accounts later if you've already created one. Records in Pure generate an entry on the research portal, a kind of shop window for the university, and search engines can then index all that information. This is an example from, of a profile pulled from Pure, pulled out into the research portal. As you scroll down through the profile, there are details of the outputs that that researcher has created. PhD students and other researchers beyond that level are automatically enrolled into Pure. To log into Pure, go to pure.beham.ac.uk and enter your usual username and password. There's a good deal of guidance regarding Pure on the intranet at the address on the top. Once you're in the Pure system, you can edit your profile and request to link or create your ORCID. If you experience any problems with Pure, you can log a call with the IT help desk. If you wish, you can go directly to ORCID and register there. It's very intuitive to use and you can enter details of your education, employment, any funding you've been awarded and under works, you can add the assets that you reflected on at the beginning of this video. You can either manually add these details or if you have assets that might be indexed on big databases, you can search and then link to one of these and search for your name. There are links to further instructions on our intranet page. If you'd like your profile to appear on the research portal, you can use the visibility setting in Pure to give the system permission to push it out. You need to save this change at the bottom of the page once you've ticked the box. I hope you found this video useful. Please do get in touch with us if you encounter any difficulties or have any further questions. 
We look forward to hearing from you.